Hey, welcome to the Dreppin' Stone Podcast, the podcast where two friends raise a glass and have a conversation. I'm Nick. I'm Kyle. Kyle. Yes, sir. Can we drink something this week? Indeed. <laughs> something back to our normal, if you will. Okay. Something that is not pushing our boundaries too terribly much. Getting back into the comfort zone. That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you got? Well, I've got a I've got a bottle here. It's a it's a blended Scotch whiskey. Okay. From the old folks over there at Compass Box. Oh, we like some Compass Box. Yeah, which I mean, I shouldn't have even had to look. They're they're all blended whiskeys. Yeah, absolutely. Out of, out of Compass Box. Yep. Um, I think like, I think like the they call themselves they the whiskey makers. John yeah. Glazer, I think, is their their head whiskey blender for sure. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, one of their blended Scotch whis- whiskeys. Yeah. <laughs> Whiskies. Yep. This is the Compass Box Artist Blend Scotch Whiskey Single Marrying Cask. Interesting. This bottle is different than most other Compass Box bottles. Well, so they have quite a few of their artist blends. I know I've seen a... Glasgow? Yeah. I've yeah, seen I've a seen Glasgow that. blend. Yep. Um, I want to say I've seen one other one. And like then a I something saw street? This one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, High street or something. I forget what it is. Yeah, yeah so, something, something yeah. street. So yep. uh, I would imagine it's, it's probably just, you know, just different blends that they put together and sure. threw in a bottle. Yeah. I think the only other Compass Box we've actually done is the Pete Monster. Correct. But at least on the podcast. I've had a couple of their Compass Box and I've, I've really liked everything that they've done. Same. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I've done very many. No, I, I think like maybe two others. But they have a great reputation. They really do. For sure. Yeah. You got any bottle words? Man, so many bottle words on this one. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going I'm to start you off with, there's a, there's a little like a sticker decal on the, on the front here. Sure. That's just giving you kind of like some um, specific information to this bottle. This is a, a sherry seasoned butt cask. Mm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. B-U-T-T. This is uh, selected by the Single Barrel Collection. Okay. This was married in January of 2020 and then bottled August of 2021. Interesting. So they've taken all these other scotches. Yep. They've blended them together. They're calling it marrying in this case. Well, I think the marrying is like the start of the process. Once, once they put it back into the Correct. cask. Correct. Yeah. But they're, they're taking it and they're putting it back into the cask. Yeah. Right. So if it was just blended, it would be like, you know, it would just skip to bottled. Right. But they blend, they, they married it in January 2020 and then gotcha. bottled it in August. Gotcha. So just put that extra age on it. Cask number 707, number of bottles, only 150 bottles. Wow. So not, not a lot not of bottles. Lot. Artist Blend is dedicated to Edinburgh, a city renowned the world over for hospitality and for nurturing artistic endeavor. From restaurants and writers to painters and performers, the Scottish capital has long been a hub for creativity. Uh, Scotch whiskey is also an ideal platform for exploring ideas and creating beautiful things. I agree with that. Built around single malt whiskeys from the Scottish Highlands and Lowland Grain whiskeys, Artist blend is reminiscent of apple, salted caramel, and baking spices. So take your cue from our Edinburgh artist on the front label, pictured in front of the Scottish National Gallery. And okay. be creative with artist's blend. So it's fall in a glass? Is that what they're saying? Seems that way. Okay. Then it gives you information on what single marrying cask is. This unique bottling has been created especially from a single marrying cask used to mature whiskey after initial blending has taken place. Interesting. Such secondary maturation used to be commonplace within the world of scotch, but has become a lost art over the past 100 years. All right. Uh, We hope you find this information enlightening. I'm enlightened. Same. John (laughs) Glacier? Glasser? Founder and whiskey maker. There it is. Awesome. That was a that was a damn bottle novel. Yeah, man. They they put a lot of shit on that bottle. <laughs> Ready to drink? Absolutely. Let's, Let's get go. into it. Nice. And one for you. Beautiful. Back to normal pours. Thank God. <laughs> Yes, back to the comfort zone. <laughs> Glenn Karen in hand. Listen, I like getting out of the comfort zone. I like experiencing new things, but it's always nice to return to the things that you it's know. It's always nice to come home. Yeah, absolutely. After that vacation. You love that vacation. That vacation, you're experiencing a lot. Then you get to come home and sit on your own couch. Yeah. And that's what this is going to do, Indeed. hopefully. <laughs> Indeed. Unless, of course, this just throws us for a loop. Yeah, could do that. Which happens. From time to time. Color. Light. Man, it is like straw water. Yep, light straw. Yeah. It's beautiful though, and it could just because of our recording lights here that uh, you know, it's it's accentuating that straw. Sure, but nice golden hue. Yeah, like watered down honey. 
looks like scotch like a really light honey yeah and scotch 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 and this is something that we we actually talked about recently with some friends of the podcast uh we got together we did a little bit of a whiskey tasting a couple weeks ago and we talked about you know the colors of scotch and we had a lock of one which was just dark right so we talked about them adding the color there mm-hmm. uh because you know scotch you can add color if you'd like indeed and uh i don't know if they're adding color to this or not but it is definitely light yeah i mean it's so light you would think probably not right but you never know on the nose Ooh, Ooh. buttery yeah there's some slight fruity peat. We didn't, we didn't we didn't discuss did no, we no no is, is it is it peated it doesn't say i mean I, I suppose it could it said it was um single malt whiskeys from the scottish highlands and lowland grain whiskeys okay so maybe not maybe no peats doesn't mention it but you know <laughs> i mean in, in my mind i'm thinking scotch maybe i just want peat well i'm you know i'm kind of wondering like could i mean i suppose you could do a blend sure and, and if it's got some, peated yeah. whiskeys in it do you need to necessarily say that i don't know i don't know there's definitely some shortbread nature there for sure yeah I'm getting apples, like Granny Smith. Like green, yeah. Yeah. A lot of honey. Like really bright, fresh honey. Like almost like those honey, like lemon drops. Sure. Yeah. There's a lot of freshness. Yes. Like I get the grain, but it's like a it's like a fresh grain. It's Absolutely. not like that, that old dusty no. uh, kind of thing. This no. is more of a fresh, bright. And when I have a lot of scotches, like I automatically go like dusty book cover. And like bookshop and like sure. dusty grain or, or right. barn. And there's no, there's none of that here. No, it's, it's bright, it's and, bright sunny. and fresh. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what's the proof on it? Cause I feel like Crisp. it's got a little bit of proof on the nose. Uh, we're going to knock around 49%. Wow. Okay. 98. Yeah. You could have fooled me. I, I would have said over a hundred. Yeah. Cause it, I mean, it just, it, it's it does, got it a nice little, little punch. Yeah. Gives it a little tickle. All right. I think I'm ready. Diving in. Wow. Mm. Okay. First impression. Yep. It feels more like an Irish. Yeah, totally. Like it, it just, it's, it's very creamy. Yeah. It screams Irish whiskey to me. Yep. Creamy shortbread. Ton of butter. Mm-hmm. A lot of butter. Mm-hmm. Really creamy. And it's thick. Yeah. Like this mouthfeel is, it's thick. It's really oily. I, I'm getting some banana too. Yeah. Just a touch. Wouldn't, wouldn't go like that full banana bread that we got. Nope. In some of the Irish recently, but touch a banana. Like fresh banana. Yep. Everything about this is like bright and fresh and nothing has like age on it. It's it's like a like a banana cream pie. Like a, a very like bright like fresh banana cream pie. Dare I say summary. It it, <laughs> it really is. It's like very kind of summary. It's weird because that juxtaposition. Colors like, got that like sun glow. Yeah, it's the the mouth is so heavy. Because mm-hmm. it, it's a very heavy mouthfeel. Yeah, very oily. And the finish is very oily, and yet the flavors are very bright. Right. I mean, I, I could say summer scotch, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, nothing. Lemon meringue. It, it's so funny because what you said was like baking spices and things like that. And and I get some of those, maybe not shortbread quality. Mm-hmm. But when I hear those words, I think fall in a glass. Right. And, I mean, we already mentioned that. I don't get any of that. Like, well, this is light. But, the, you know, that, that's like one of the weird things of like, you know, apple, salted caramel, baking spices. Right. Absolutely. If you think of like dark red apples. Right. And cinnamon and those kind of baking notes. Like, yeah, for sure. That's, that's, but that's fall. That's what those words are could, leading me down. But you could also think of like bright, fresh Granny Smith apples. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know where you go with the baking spice because I don't bake a whole lot. But, <laughs> um, you know, like lemon zest or something sure. like, you know, those kinds of notes would kind of gear you towards more spring and summer no i mean i i I agree with you it's just it's interesting like they they kind of push you down one direction with the words that they're saying but i mean this is something different yeah (laughs) and and in a good way like i was almost like man fall on the glass like i don't know there is the caramel note but it's not it's not it's just not dark yeah it's not like that rich caramel yep it's more of just a light touch a caramel when i'm thinking salted caramel like i get it like a salted caramel cookie or like a salted caramel latte kind of thing like it, it's definitely there right i'm really like i'm surprised in how thick this mouth feel is and still just how bright it all is and how fresh it all is right especially because most of the the whiskeys that i've had that are a really thick oily mouth feel or like a meal in a glass and you right. just feel like it's so clingy and it's just it's grabbing hold of everything but this like the clinginess is the bitter on the back end. Right. But it's just, again. But bright. even even that bitter, it seems stupid to say a bright bitter. Right. But even like that bitter is not like a, a dark bitter. Right. It is kind of more just like touch of a bitter that, I mean, it, it hangs with you. It has a really nice finish because of that clinginess. 
but it's not like that overwhelming, you know, depressing bitter. I get what you mean. Like nothing, I think you said it, nothing is overwhelming here. Yeah. It's all just in that like nice, fresh wheelhouse. That is delightful. Yeah. What, what was the age statement again? Not one. Okay. Because it's blended. Because it's blended, right. But they don't, I mean, aged for over a year after the marrying process for an extra year and a half. Okay. It doesn't say anything about the, the whiskeys that the they whiskeys blended. The whiskeys themselves, which I, I find, were. I, I've been doing a lot of research on scotch lately, and we actually talked about this with those same friends that we did a tasting with, and we were talking about like Lagavulin 16. It can be blended, and, and that's what they're doing. They are blending a lot of different things. Sure. Youngest whiskey certified in that glass has to be 16 years. At least 16 years. At least yeah. 16 years. So, like, why not give us an age statement? I mean, because I guess you could say the youngest whiskey is six years or six months, and then, like, you have to call it a six-month whiskey. I'm sorry. You're, you're talking about Lagavulin 16. Yeah. The youngest whiskey in that glass is 16 years. Okay. Lag- so like, Lagavulin's a blend? Most scotches are blends in that way. Lagavulin 16 is not a it's single not. malt? Single malt does not mean not blended. I figured that out too. But I thought single malt meant single malt single means, distillery, single grain no. within one season. Single malt just means single grain, a one malted grain. It does not necessarily mean different seasons. What are we thinking? What's the term that where they always talk about from a single distillery from a single dis- season? I was attributing that to so that, that's what I've always done. But in the what I've just read here lately, that that's not the case. I'm I'm just interested that there's no age statement here. Like other On than this, yeah, other than like, well, I mean, who knows how many how many whiskeys we're pulling from? Correct, could be could be 17 whiskeys. You know, <laughs> or could like be, the Nico, where yeah, it's 150, yeah, 100, 100 different whiskeys that <laughs> right. we're blending together. Like right. you know, may, maybe there is like maybe you can go to Compass Box, and sure. I'm sure they've got the pedigree. You know, somewhere that you could you could look it all up. If but you pay for it, probably. <laughs> If you pay for it, or if you know, if it's just like that much of a passion and you want it, maybe they can provide that for you. Right. Or yeah. maybe it's two whiskeys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. No. But I agree. Like just some sort of um, you know, ranging. Right. Here, you know, the the youngest Especially is this, because the youngest is four years and the oldest is a twenty two year right. that we poured some in. And and that especially because like age ranges are such a consumer thing right now. Right. But I mean, not only in, in bourbon and you know, American and Irish whiskeys, but in scotches, like people want to know how old is this thing? Totally. And they were, they're, they're so willing to give you so much information anyway. Yeah. Just a, a, a an age statement range would be yeah, very beneficial. Well, it's like Chattanooga we did a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Like that bottle, it's got all kinds of information yeah, on it. Yeah, totally. They gave you all of it. Yeah. They basically told just you said, what hey, the blend was. Yeah, make, yeah. make this again if you want. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sure. You got these bottles? Yeah. Them together. You can do this. Yeah. Why not? That is a friendly, bright whiskey. Yeah. Can I ask ballpark MSRP in our area? Around 50. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like that's usually the case with Compass Box. Like they've got some bottles that you um, that you can find that are, you know, pushing that $100 yeah. number. Yep. But I feel like most of their stuff is right around that $50 Yeah, mark. most of their main line is. I, I think like Pete Monster, which is probably their most popular because that's like the most what they're recognized for. Mm-hmm. I think in our area, that's around $70 a bottle. Right. Kyle. Yes, sir. We've grown up. Well, we try to every day. Yes, it doesn't always work. Our wives tell us otherwise. Correct. You know what we did? What did we do? We did a professional podcasting. Ooh. I know. Nicer mics? Uh, no. <laughs> um, I like our mics. You don't like our mics? New wardrobe. Uh, definitely not. Cause you can't hear it. No. Right, right, right. Mm-mm. What did we do? We joined Patreon. No way. Yeah. Well, that's finally. Super cool. About time, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I think we're in the right stage for that. Yeah. I mean, we know podcasts that do it right away. That's yeah. not us. Nah. I think you got to earn Nothing it. Nothing on that. Got to build up to it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're getting millions of downloads at this point. Millions? Okay, well, maybe not millions. Oh. We're heading in that direction, though. Awesome. Take that, Joe Rogan. Yeah. Eating into that viewership. Yeah. <laughs> listenership all of that to say kyle we've got a brand new patreon page sweet yeah you can find that patreon.com slash drip and stone perfect i know makes sense one word it's always one word yes it is drip and stone d-r-e-p and stone correct sweet <laughs> yeah there's a couple of different tiers on that patreon and go there honestly it tells you exactly what you get through patreon and there's a lot of cool stuff access to behind the scenes access to what's going on in our general lives it's a lot of fun our buy me a coffee page kyle it's still up it's still working still brewing yeah but we're we're slowly making that transition over to patreon and it's a lot of fun over there yeah, i gotta totally. be honest with you that's pretty exciting it is really exciting yeah videos comments direct links that extra no. juicy content that you're really looking for. Anyway, again, that is patreon.com slash Drep and Stone. 
The links are everywhere. And we'd love it if you help support the podcast. Absolutely. You got to come join along. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Now that we've got a pretty damn good drink, Kyle. Delightful. I agree. Yeah. We want to talk about this week. I recently had the, the thought of it being summer and it kind of like a shift in just kind of everybody's daily coming abouts. Yeah. The concept of the routine. Oh. And how that okay. can be shifted and how that's a good thing. And sometimes it's a frustrating thing of... And, you know, sometimes we live and die by the routine, right. but like then a lot of times, like you just absolutely need to shake Break things up and get out of that routine. Sure. And just the idea of the routine. Yeah. So micro and macro. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. That's, that's some fancy words right yeah. there. Like I have a very specific showering routine, which I would think is very micro. Yeah. Uh, just in that few minutes. But you want to walk like, us you know, through it? Yeah, absolutely. So okay. first. <laughs> no, you don't have to do that. <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, there's a, a routine within routines and within routines. Right. I mean, I think you could go through a routine that could last a few minutes, mm-hmm. a few seconds, maybe. And then you could stretch out like a routine for, you know, whatever time frame you want to go. Like, could, right. you, could you do a year's routine? Like, yeah. I, I would assume like there's... To some degree, you could certainly set that up. Like, that's how we break things up, you know, economically or, you know, calendar wise of like, yeah. this is the time for this thing. You know, we just hit like halfway to, to Christmas and yeah. like there was a lot of like uh, <laughs> social media stuff that was like doing that kind of thing of like, hey, halfway. Right. And it's like, okay, it's just kind of like a mindset of like, this is where we're at yeah. with, within this time period. So I, I feel like, and maybe it's just because of how the nature of my job. Mm-hmm. outside of the podcast is is very routine driven right it's very regimented education it's, right it's very strict it's right. very <laughs> bell driven bell driven yeah Absolutely. for sure so like half of my life exists within that sphere right of like this is very routine and regimented right and the other half whether it's you know times off of school times not spent in in that kind of uh, modality it's very much not right so like I think I have a a nice perspective and benefit of like, here's how routines work. Here's when they are necessary. Right. Here's where they fail. Here's where the individual needs to take control of that routine. Right. Because I'm a victim of the summer. We've talked about this off the pod where like summer hits and like everything just goes to hell. Right. Routine goes out the window. Yeah. Routine just completely is obliterated. Right. And I love it. Yeah, is that refreshing or is yeah. that more frustrating? No, it's it's refreshing initially, and then at some point it's like... Becomes frustrating. Right, like, wow, I need to get back in that routine. I mean, Carol and I have had conversations recently about like, okay, we got to slowly get our sleeping schedule back on routine. Right. Uh, you know, waking up at that <laughs> 4.35 in the morning <laughs> right. kind of thing. Well, and, and you're only at this point just a few weeks into it. Right. And you're already like <laughs> itching to get back into the right. routine. Well, by the time this episode comes out, we're, we're nearing the Fair end of summer. Fair enough. For us anyway. I mean, we, we know that we've got listeners everywhere. That seems depressing. Well, it is a little bit. <laughs> we got listeners everywhere that their summer extends into September. Ours here in Florida, in terms of school-wise, it does not. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, currently I've got my life set up that the summer doesn't really adjust anything kind of like that. Right. So the routine just kind of stays as is, which I work at a location where my schedule shifts from week to week. So the routines that I have are, are not so focused on that week schedule there's not really one right it's more it breaks down to the day schedule right the routine is broken down into those 24 hour segments of this is what i'm doing today so like i am working today this is my routine this is on a work, work day. day schedule right yeah if i'm off today all right well then this is we're going to set up the day this way mm-hmm. do you find that to be frustrating um that that like constant shifting back and forth i think there's a level of comfort that you just eventually find yourself in regardless. Like Mm. when I was teaching, I would say it was honestly kind of more frustrating to have that rigidity of it being the exact same week in, week out for X number of weeks out of the year, right? year after year after year. You know, it just kind of fell into that kind of, um, that repetition that was, that was kind of more frustrating in the rigidity of that. Whereas now kind of like week by week, not really knowing what the schedule is going to be, it's kind of like you're just able to kind of be more receptive of what the week's going to entail. Right. What's going to get done? Where do I need to plan these things? It just kind of is a little bit more of a open process. Sure. Yeah. And see, like for me, what you just said is actually like 
create some anxiety. It's sure. An open process. Right. The the summer me still experiences that, but it's like I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Right. Like wow, that that to me is that shift. That it's not really the open nature. It's that constant shifting back and forth. Sure. It's that like. Well, can I make a decision for something six months down the road, like a doctor's appointment or something like that? Because I don't know what I'm doing that day. Right. And so for me, that's a little more like, oh, create some anxiety because of that. For sure. And I, th- I think it's probably, you know, it's just human nature to find comfort in the situation that you're in. Right. Because like, you know, I, I think I could definitely like, you know, attest to that of being kind of like a, a weird thing to get used to. But the more you do it, the more you, you find like the rhythm of that routine. Absolutely. And you're just able to find your comfort zone. Yeah. In it, you know? So, I mean, and, and I guess in your case too, like, you know, okay, so next week I do have a doctor's appointment on Tuesday. I've got to switch schedules with somebody so that I can make that doctor's appointment on Tuesday or whatever. I mean, in, in our situation, it's more like, oh, hey, I'm actually going to work that day. I need to change my, my doctor's schedule. And adjusting things that way. Like it's more. Gotcha. It's more. So you, you, I mean, I've, got, I've got like general days that I'm usually off. So, you know, it's like I can usually guaranteed I'm going to be off that day. Right. So I can schedule things for that. But if things end up switching around, it's it's easy enough to adjust things to work accordingly to whatever the week has gotcha. in store. Gotcha. I'm going to go do this thing on this day. But if that needs to change, I have that availability mm. that I can make that work. So. What is your normal workday routine? Like, walk me through that. What really got me to thinking about this is I've, I've actually changed that. So okay. recently, my work routine is I work a, a PM shift right. to where I start, I have to go and be clocked in at 2 o'clock. So usually I wake up, and, and, and I've always been much more of a an evening-based person. Right. I'm not a morning person. Waking up at any time before 8 o'clock <laughs> is really like a struggle for me. I always thought that like that was something that just came with age <laughs> that like the <laughs> older you got, the easier to wake up it would be. Mm. And it's just not me. Right. Like I'm just not geared for that time of the day. Okay. I really like it. I, I like being awake early when I'm there, but like, it's like, has to be like a choice. Right. Kind like of thing. That, the waking up process. Is yeah. Not. If I have to make myself wake up, yeah. like I just, I, I, <laughs> especially knowing that like, it's not like you get to wake up that early and enjoy it. Right. You got to wake up early and go to work. Correct. It was always just like such a struggle for me. And like even in the in the four years that I taught, I never got used to it. Like, right. Like I, I, it was always a struggle and it was never anything that just became natural. Okay. I just always had to work at it. So now that your routine has changed a little bit. Right. You work those PMs. What time do you normally wake up? Anytime between seven and eight. Okay. Is usually like the time that I wake up. Yeah. Um, you set an alarm or no? No. Okay. Just, just wake up. Let, let the sunlight wake me up with its gentle caress bathe you in its <laughs> yeah gotcha wake up do the coffee you know give myself usually like 30 minutes to an hour to be cognizant <laughs> right um and at that point i've got a nice chunk of time there to do what needs to be done mm-hmm. and whatever that day entails this is the priority today get that done work on that thing devote a little time here to that and, and you can kind of like you know start to basically plan that day plan out that day right knowing then that at this point in time you've got to start to get ready for work gotcha and then that starts the more rigid routine right of time periods of all right got to be in the shower by this point in time you need to leave the house by this point in time you got to be clocked in at this point in time and start your shift at this point in time right but what i've shifted recently is like my job requires that once you're once you're present you take a 30 minute break <laughs> Which is a really frustrating thing right off the bat. Here's your break. That's weird. Which just in my brain is wasted time. Right. Why am I here? I'm here. I'm not accomplishing anything. And for the past year, that time has just been spent either talking to people that I work with, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Right. Or just flipping through my phone, wasting time. Right. But it's been an objective of mine to do more creatively. Mm -hmm. So instead what I've started doing the past, I don't know, few weeks is going to a a different area, going to a different like quieter room and setting up with a sketchbook and making myself do certain exercises in my sketchbook for that 25 to 30 minutes of setting myself like a time limit. All right, here you go. 
fill up this page with with drawings. And you only got 20 minutes, go. You got 20 minutes. Yeah. Go for it. Cool. Do whatever you want to do with it. Just to change your routine. Just to change my routine and... You know, looking back to always like I'm always thinking about that 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 concept of you make time for what's important. Right. And if you're if you've wanted to do something artistic and you're not doing it, then it must not be important to you. Right. So this is like, you know, utilizing that that 30 minutes that is just wasted time anyway to do something that is creative and like. I freaking love it. Like yeah. I used to like go in and like dread that wasted time of like, what a stupid concept. Like we've got this wasted time, <laughs> but just having a sketchbook with me has right. now like given that time purpose of like, all right, you got 30 minutes, fill up that page, right? Go create, work through it. Love it. Yeah. Love oh, that's it. cool. And then you, you normally get home 10, 30. So then, yeah. So then from that, I do my shift and I'm at the house back home by about 10, 10 30. Right. Normally what time you go to sleep. So Give from that point, you know, I'll, I'll eat something. I'm usually asleep by midnight. Gotcha. And that's the day. <laughs> and then do it all rinse, over again. <laughs> rinse and repeat. I mean, generally my days that I work are kind of clogged together. Right. But occasionally it is more of a random, like one day on one day off, one day on one day off. But generally, they're 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 kind of grouped together. Would you rather them grouped together? Or do you like that? Like, I'll work a Monday and a Wednesday and a Friday. You know, it just kind of depends. Like, I don't, I don't really necessarily have a preference. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you know, there there are times where the schedule requires you to work nine, ten days in a row, just <laughs> where it's like I'm working the five days on the back end of this week and the next five days on the front end of this week to right. make a. A vacation or something work out. Sure. And certainly that's never the preference, but, um, <laughs> that's a grind. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, you know, it's just, it, you just, you just work what you work. Yeah. And it's not necessarily like you don't really put much thought into that. Yeah. It's just like, no, today's a work day. You, you set up for that. Yeah. Today's an off day. Cool. I better go cut grass. Yeah. <laughs> for me, like in the summer, obviously the r- routine is all over the place. I mean, but what normally happens is about the third week of summer, give or take, I start to fall into what I kind of consider would be my default if I didn't have work in terms of schoolwork. Right. And that's like, I'll go to bed at somewhere around 11 and I'll wake up somewhere around eight, you know, maybe like very rarely and after nine, right? very rarely. Right. And then I'll wake up again, similar to you, takes me a little bit to become human. 30 minutes, get some coffee, you know, walk around a little bit. When does that start? Like the, the getting coffee? Yeah. Like almost right away. Like, no, no, no. Like oh. what time in the morning? Uh, let's call it 8.30. Okay. Yeah, let's call it 8.30 uh, in, in summer mode. Yep. Call it 8.30, wake up, get coffee going or, or figuring out coffee. I like to do like small, like little chore things that don't require any attention of me, for me. Like as I'm getting coffee ready, I'll go grab clothes and throw clothes in the washer right? or like things like that. I don't have to think about it. It's just like, I'm going to step one, put that here, right? Do, you know, that kind of thing on um, auto. Right. As, as coffee's getting going, right. I'll drink the coffee. Normally, you know, either during coffee, I'll flip through my phone or, you know, I might read that kind of thing. And then sometimes I'll work on podcast stuff. Sometimes, you know, we'll, We'll sit there and watch some TV in in the morning time, and then normally get lunch. Good lunch. I mean, the summer is pretty flexible. Right. Come back if we've if we've gone out for lunch, or you know, still doing some reading, maybe some some prep for next year, school wise kind of thing. You know, maybe planning vacation, that kind of deal. And then about three thirty, start getting ready to go to the gym. Go to the gym. Come back home about five thirty. Get dinner going, and then normally watch a couple things on, you know, might, might watch a movie, might watch some TV stuff and then, um, go to bed somewhere around 11. Right. That's the summer mode. And it's, it's really flexible. There's nothing like you got to do this. You got to do this. Just things pop up. And right. Gotta take it's care more of it. organic. It, it really is. So like, I, I kind of like joke that if I won the lottery and I didn't have to work a day job anymore, that's probably the general routine. Right. I would probably become a little more rigid. Like I would schedule it out a little bit better because I feel better like legitimately feel better on work mode. Right. And in work mode, it's it's a totally different schedule. It's much more regimented. It's much more routine. Right. I mean, I think back to like, all right, so when I was teaching and I did have that way more rigid, 
you've got to do this at this point in time, even without the work aspect of it. Once you got home, even then it was still so much rigidness of you've got to be in bed by this point in time or you're going to have a shit day the next day. Exactly. You know, so like every aspect of it, you need to eat by this point. You need to, you know, just to have everything line up accurately. And then you compare that personally during COVID, I was off of work for over a year. Right. I saw then of like what retirement, <laughs> exactly, you know, in quotation marks, feels like. And like, man, I, like, I feel like months just wiped away. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Just of like, because like you don't have a routine and it's like everything is non essential and can just get pushed away, yep. pushed back. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. Like, there was just so much flexibility and everything that it be, certainly became a crutch of, accomplishing anything like you really had to become like really focused right on every single little thing that you did to make it a priority right and that was like a struggle it really is and like you know the creative people that we are i feel like if we were to engage in our creativity without the day jobs whether it's through podcasts or through other things whatever we're doing like it has to be a very cognizant choice of you are, this is the schedule you are going to follow. And I, I know that listeners with, you know, jobs that they are working from home, they they do create that. And like it, it becomes more of self-discipline in that way. And I think quarantine kind of taught us some of that. Well, what it really drives down to is your routine requires purpose. And if you don't have a purpose and there's not a reason for it, it becomes so much harder to engage Right. In that routine. Absolutely. Like during that quarantine phase, once I was separated from my job, finances became a struggle. Right. And it was like, all right, it's time. Like, all right, we we need to find something else to do. So all of a sudden, painting became a very important thing. (laughs) Right. To start creating things just to to generate a little bit of income. So I painted a lot. Yeah. During you were busting out like during that time period to painting, like creating stuff like literally full on days of like waking up, start painting, painting stuff till literally like time to go to bed. Right. Was literally like painting 24 seven and that purpose created a new routine. So without that purpose, the routine was gone. Right. But once there was the purpose involved, the routine got very structured yeah. really quick. Well, I think of like friends of mine who are writers and like that is their profession you know, they, they write a book and the book is written. And then like, there are people that it takes, like they'll never write another book or it takes them, you know, six years to write another book. Right. Whereas you think of like someone like Stephen King, who the, the, the man can write a book every six months. And he was at some points. Right. And now that he's older, he's not doing that as, as readily, but like James Patterson and these people who are like cranking book after book, after book, after book. It's because they have that kind of routine. They have that necessity yeah. of like Grisham, uh, Grisham, Grisham, same thing. Like <laughs> I was like, he's got another book out. Yeah, like it's same idea. And I don't know, maybe they are using ghostwriters, but it's still that same idea of like I, I'm cranking this out, not because I can write quickly. Right, I can, but it's also because like I have that routine. I know what I want to do. I know how I want to construct the story. Just, just do the thing. It's a work day. Right. I mean, think about it. like if most creatives spent that regimented workday time, how much they could create. Right. And there are people that do that. There are people that, you know, they will do, bands will wake up, you know, Monday morning, like we're going to put in a full nine hours. And right. they do that and they release a an album every two years. <laughs> right. And then there are people who, they release an album every five years if they're lucky. Right. Amidst touring or things like that. we made this album and that's all we got. Yeah, we got like, the we'll, one thing. We'll, yeah, we'll never be able to read. Or I made this painting and everyone loves it, but I'm never going to do anything again. Right. Kind of thing. So I, I just think about it that way because I know me in terms of the, the regimented schedule school-wise, I mean, because as you mentioned, it's so like got to wake up at this time because I got to give myself 15 minutes to right. do this. And then I got to be able to get here and do that. Like because of the regimented nature of it, I'm actually doubly productive in right. terms of like totally that kind of thing and th- in the in the amount of things that you can get done in that Absolutely. time period because one you're you're so acclimated to that right that you know what you're capable of getting done exactly and and it also kind of forces you into and we've talked about this with our decision making episode it forces you into decision right like 
I don't have 45 minutes to contemplate what I want for breakfast. I've just got to eat something. Right. So like, what, what yeah, do I got? Decision okay. made. Yeah, done. Right. Here we go. I've eaten something. Now move on. Right. Versus like, yeah, it's well, not like, what am I in the mood for? Exactly. Like, like I, you don't mm, have that luxury. Right. And I tend to function better in that modality. I would think most people probably yeah. do. You know, it's it's that whole conversation of like, if you remove emotion from right. something, like, are you that much more capable of making a decision? Right. Generally, like, yeah. But at the same time, like, you need some of it to be able to finally make it or else it's just like, it's all meaningless. <laughs> exactly. But at what point do they balance each other out to where you're like your most effective ability? Yeah, no, for sure. So we actually threw this out on Twitter. Do you want to hear what some listeners have to say about routines? Absolutely. All right. So we asked, how does your day-to-day routine change now that it's fully summer? Right. Because I thought that 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 would be interesting and and generate some interesting concepts. Sure. Unless you're, you know, summertime is the one because if you got kids, it's adjusting. (laughs) Absolutely. If you're you're in school, obviously it's adjusting. If you're a teacher, it's adjusting. So summer's the time. Yeah. So Jerry says, now that I'm an empty nester, first time, there wasn't a change because kids weren't home all summer. It's a new experience. I know. Man. So he's ultimate freedom, I guess. Yeah, I'm all for that. <laughs> Who was that? Uh, Jerry. 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 Good yep. on you. Yep. Uh, the sci-fi wise guys say working from home, it just means that my electric bill is much higher doing the running the AC mm. all the time. So that's a whole nother concept of <laughs> yeah, absolutely. like, where does like, you know, for a certain number of people, like the summer is going to create more obstacles. Yep. For sure. Uh, Dominic says more cardio to become one with the heat. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Dominic loves that heat. He likes that sweat. <laughs> yeah, he does. Come to Florida. Uh, Richard says, I get up early due to the early sunrise. Same. Yeah. Like, I, I intentionally leave my windows, the blinds and everything open, open. so that that sun will wake me up. Yeah. I think, like, how our blinds are, like, it, the sunlight just comes right through it. And right. it definitely, it wakes us up every hmm. day. Chance says, my work schedule is a lot more flexible, down to just a few hours a week most of the time. Travel time, grilling time, and time with the kids to replace the hours at work. Wow. Real in time. Yeah. I'm down with that. <laughs> Kyle says there are far fewer pants involved. <laughs> God, did I write that? You didn't, but you literally Man, said it. Just I just made minute that ago. joke just yeah. a minute ago. <laughs> For sure you did. Uh, Mario said four weeks of not having to go to work in the morning so I can play games all day instead. Boom. Well, except for having to spend the month moving house. So Mario's just moved house, but you know. And finally, the Friday night music party says I curse global warming even louder. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, party on that Friday night. We live in Florida, so that's basically what we're doing all the time. Yeah, luckily anyway. we're in Central Florida, so we'll we'll last a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> right, the the ocean will not rise to meet us as quick, but Quite we will have quickly. oceanfront property soon. Ah, good point. I know, it's a, it's a it's property kind value. of a positive. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if does the property value go up in that case. I would imagine it has to. There's there more. There's going to be more hurricanes though. There's fewer Florida. <laughs> fewer less. <laughs> fewer. Lesser. A lesser Florida means more value. Yeah, but it also means more hurricanes. Not wrong. Like And like bad, massive hurricanes. Correct. We're going to change the scale. We're going to the category. Eight. Goes up to five, right? Yeah. Yeah. Eight. <laughs> Bitchin'. <laughs> What's this hurricane? Bitchin'. Category bitchin'. Well, on that note, Kyle, you got anything else? You want to pair this really quick? Sure. Why not? Because like this, this flavor profile, I feel like is in the ballpark of Booney mm-hmm. or Brook Lodic. Ooh. The classic laddie. Let's go. Let's go Boonahaven. I haven't had the classic Boonahaven in a while. Been a minute? Yeah. Been a minute. Let's go. Boonahaven. Is an Isla? It is an Isla. Yep. You don't have a whole lot in that bottle, do you? Two thirds. Yeah. Ish. It is a sad sounding pour. <laughs> Whoa, look at that color. Yeah. Thank you, sir. It being a, a light, bright, non peated. I do know. Throw it up against the best of the breed. We're both fans of Boonhaven. I think we've both been pretty clear that in terms of a non peated whiskey, you can't really beat Boonhaven. No, you really can't. It's. Man, it is so good. It's one of those, like, I, I want more people to know how good it is, but I also don't want more people to know because then they're going to buy all the bottles. <laughs> well, I mean, at, at the same time, Bunahaven is since uh, 1881. Correct. It's if been they haven't heard about it by now, <laughs> I don't know if Drep and Stone is the one that's uh, 
enlightening you. <laughs> Breaking story. Yeah. Hot take. Woo. Bunahaven exists. What's your take on Bunahaven? Do you think they do you think they color? I think they do. Yeah. I do. You think you think it's just in Scotland they just can't get the heat to I, dry out the absolutely. color? Absolutely. And think about it, they're using former casks. They're not using brand new casks. Good point. So the liquid is already if they're already, not recharring it exactly, and I don't. Think I'm they sure are. they're not. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. And the weather swings are not there, so they're, you're not going to get like. I would say that Compass Box is a truer color than Bunahaven. Now, do I know that for sure? I don't work at the distillery, so I don't know that for sure. But that's that's my assumption. Again, though, but at the same time, like Bunahaven is 12 years old. That's <laughs> like, true. You're sitting in that. St- in that barrel for 12 years. That's very true. You should be able to draw out some color. Okay, ready? Lafroy, right down the street, 10 years old, looks no like straw color. water. Yeah, no yeah. color at all. So, like, I, I, I'm with you on the age statement. I mean, think about the Lagavulin 16. That's a dark scotch. Sure. 16 years in that barrel. But. They got to add some color to it. I mean, Lagavulin is just right down the road from Bunnhaven and Lafroy. Right now, yeah. yeah. So, if, you, if you pull it up on Google Maps, like, <laughs> they're you could, all like. You could walk. Yeah. You if could, you wanted you could, to, you, you could, could drive a golf ball. To all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which I'm sure they have. Probably. I mean, knowing the Scots, our friends, the Scots. Knows. Yeah. That Booney. Oh. That Booney's got that rich, that richer. Yeah, that like deep mahogany. The the richness on the nose goes to Boonhaven for sure. For sure. You know what? I'm just going to say it. Although they nose very similarly, I actually, like, I don't prefer Compass Box over Boonhaven. I think they're just too different and what i mean by that is like the compass box is really bright and fresh and airy and the bunahaven is like dark and and steakhouse and like dark room and maybe a, like a, a maduro cigar versus like just like bright fresh and happy they're just so dramatically different from one another dramatically different yeah i would say like in that one again is bright fresh sunny and the other is just like deep dark and brooding i would disagree uh huh. I think they're like they're in the same ballpark. They're in like what way? like one is playing second base and one is playing shortstop. Same team. Same team. <laughs> same sport. Yeah. Same. <laughs> like that's why I went specifically. Okay. Second base and shortstop. Like I think like they're they're right there together. I don't think there's a dramatic difference. I think it's just a subtle difference in between. One is richer and darker. One is brighter and I would say a little bit. Friendlier. Yeah. A little bit more accepting. Boonhaven has a little bit more proof on it. I but mean, like, but they're right there together. Light, but they're right. Yeah. They're yeah. right there. I mean, dramatic would be like if you were like. <laughs> I'm saying dramatic within that this ballpark <laughs> to go back to your metaphor. Like I'm, I'm saying like it, it's not dramatic in terms of like a super heavily peated scotch and a light space side. I'm not saying like that. I know, but I'm saying like go just nose. They're right there together, and I, I think I would still it, edge the nose to Bunahaven. It's really the 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 palate. It's the deep, the dark, the brooding, and just that whiff of ocean air that like just ever so slight hint of brine. Like I feel like if you were to give these to me, you know, there there's an Isla and there's a not an Isla. <laughs> Which is the Isla? I think I could pick out the Bunahaven as the Isla because it has that like dark, rich, slight brine, just like. Whereas the, the compass box, it just seems bright and fresh and airy. For me personally right now, which one would I want more of? Yep. I think I go compass box. Really? Wow. Oddly enough, just because I think it's it fits summertime a little better. Mm-hmm. I think the Bunahaven I agree being completely. richer, darker is a little bit more fall, winter. 100% so. I think I'd go compass. Honestly, I'm impressed that it's not even just being overwhelmed. Yep. No, by Boonhaven. I, I, the I fact that I think completely. I can hold these together and be like, wow. They, yeah, you can pick these both These are both out. really good. Yep. Um, and, and, I, and I think they do, they do, I still, I give the nose to Boonhaven. If I'm thinking like summer scotch, I'm going to go with the compass box. If I'm thinking like overall, if I could only have one more of yeah. these, like it's going to be Boonhaven. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the, the age on the Boonhaven is going to overtake mm-hmm. the brightness of the compass, one hundred percent. But man, any other time that we've we've put Boonhaven with anything else, it's like easy. Oh yeah, easy. That's the Boonhaven. This time of year, yep. You know, like I think I think maybe the compass box works a little better because, yeah, I think there's a, there's a really good argument. We have a we have a, a a shared friend that always made the argument to me of like you only play Christmas music 
at Christmas. <laughs> right. That's the only time it's acceptable. Because if you play it any other time, it's no longer special. Right. So it's like that concept of like this drink is only appropriate at this time. Uh, see, I'm I'm becoming a, an apologist against that because Same. scotch scotch was that for me. Like you only drink scotch in the fall, bro, May, it, and, and in the winter. Even still, for me, when we when we started this episode, just smelling this and like sipping it, like I'm already in that kind of like winter mindset. Right. That's just what scotch does for me. Right. But but. <laughs> but this one is so bright. Exactly. And it's like so friendly. It does, you know, kind of suggest, you know, maybe you could break that. And this is now like a summer, a summer scotch. Break out your Bing Crosby. Here we go. In July. Do you have anything else? No, I don't think so. No, nah, me neither. I'm, I'm interested to get back into my routine and I'm going to start again soon. You're looking forward to it. Yeah. Not interested. I know what it is. <laughs> right. I'm looking forward to You're it. You're looking yeah. forward to getting back into Absolutely. that routine. Well, we want to know what you think about the Compass Box Artist Blend. Yeah, or just Compass Box in general. Yeah. If, if you've had a blend that we haven't had, let us know. And you know, sure. we'll, we'll look out for that one. And if you're interested in us reviewing one for you, you can send us a bottle. <laughs> we can do that too. Yeah, absolutely. And we want to know your thoughts on routine and your routine. Where is it most rigid and where does it kind of get loosey-goosey? Yeah, and what happens when that routine is broken or you switch that routine up? Yeah, does it is it more refreshing to break it or do you kind of like it and you're settled into it? Yeah, you can get in touch with us through email. It's drepinstone at gmail.com. You can also get in touch with us through social media. It's always one word, drepinstone, D. DREP and Stone, come find us, like some things, share some things, and always comment on some things because we'd like to hear that and comment back at you. Yeah, 100%. And you can support the podcast through our Patreon page. Kyle, that's still relatively new. It, at this point in time, it's 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 still relatively new. Absolutely. We've got a lot of people hanging out there, and uh, you know we're posting behind-the-scenes kind of things. We're posting things that are happening during the week, pours that we're having. It's a lot of fun. It's always evolving, and it's just so much more personal, and we get to connect with you on such a better level. Absolutely. And that's patreon.com slash Drepinstone. There's a couple of different levels there. You choose how you want to support. Indeed. And you can support the podcast by rating Drepinstone wherever it is you find great podcasts like this one. And finally, Kyle, you can support the podcast by literally... Walking up to someone and saying, hey, you heard about Drevin Stone? They just released an episode that you'd totally be interested in. Absolutely. Like, they, they did Compass Box. You love Compass you Box. You love Compass Box. They even talked about Boonahaven. Indeed. Go talk and to them. you love that. Listen to it. <laughs> they See what they got to they say. They did an episode where they drank the Jack Daniels summer cocktail stuff. <laughs> And, and it was interesting. And, and Nick literally puked <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah, it was great. You should check it out. Crazy cool. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. May your glass overflow. And your ass never show. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. I didn't know you were recording that the whole time. I can uh, attest to that. Yeah. Yeah. That was a tiny bladder and a large man. Oh. Oh, salad. Salad. Wow. <laughs> what do you do with the salad? Jeff Bezos, you know, he's all about the earth friendliness. He told me himself. No oh, shit. Damn it, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wait, 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 wait. Slow down. I'm going to take that out. Don't worry. Listen. We're going to take that out. We're, we're comfortable. We know. Part of the process. Same. Like, I, I've got a, I got a lot of flint. Uh, <laughs> Flim. This was tame. <laughs> the mm. shit didn't we say? You being here. Yeah, it's it's made us really it's quelled. made us better. I don't know better. It's ma- <laughs> it's made us it's, it's made us more PG. Pa- pa- podcast. Podcast. Pa- podcast. Get that podcast. <laughs>